Though the tragedy of the Titanic is widely recognized, there are other maritime catastrophes that in many ways surpass it in terms of terror, controversy, and casualties. This list presents 10 such incidents where the fate of those stranded at sea was determined largely by human behavior, ranging from acts of bravery to instances of cannibalism, remarkable survival, homicides, and mysterious vanishings. Number 10, the Essex, 1820. Although the Essex whaling ship's disaster didn't match the Titanic in terms of fatalities, its story is arguably more horrific. This event, which inspired Herman Melville's Moby Dick, occurred in November 1820 when a sperm whale attacked the ship about 2,000 miles from South America. The 20 crew members were left to escape in small whaleboats with limited supplies. Within two weeks, they ran out of food and resorted to drinking their urine. A brief respite came when they found food and water on Henderson Island, but soon they had to leave, minus three men who chose to stay on the island. As the journey continued, starvation led to the deaths of several crew members. Initially, the dead were cast into the sea, but as desperation grew, the survivors turned to cannibalism. The situation worsened to the point where they drew lots to decide who would be sacrificed for food. An 18-year-old named Owen Coffin was chosen and subsequently killed and eaten. By the time they were rescued near Chile in February 1821, only five crew members remained, having survived by consuming seven of their companions. Number 9. Empress of Ireland, 1914. The RMS Empress of Ireland, operated by the Canadian Pacific Steamship Company, was a ship that benefited from the revised lifeboat standards established after the Titanic tragedy. Despite being outfitted with sufficient lifeboats for 280 more passengers than its capacity and having watertight doors, the vessel met a tragic fate. On May 29, 1914, in thick fog near the St. Lawrence River's mouth, it collided with the Norwegian vessel Storstad, sinking in just 15 minutes and resulting in the loss of 1,012 of its 1,477 passengers and crew. The collision caused water to flood in rapidly, preventing the closing of the watertight doors. The ship quickly tilted to its starboard side, rendering the lifeboats on the port side unusable. While many on the starboard side perished in their cabins, a few managed to reach the deck and successfully launched five lifeboats. Power failure struck five minutes post-collision, engulfing the ship in darkness. Shortly after, with all accessible lifeboats deployed, the Empress of Ireland tipped onto its starboard side. This left hundreds stranded on the now exposed port side hull, where they waited in distress, watching the icy waters rise inexorably described by a survivor as akin to watching the tide come in on a beach. Number 8. The SS Pacific, 1856 Edward Collins, the founder of Collins Line, faced further tragedy beyond the loss of his wife and two children in the SS Arctic disaster. His company's other vessel, the SS Pacific, vanished in the Atlantic in January 1856. Departing from Liverpool, bound for New York City, the ship carried 45 passengers and 141 crew members. Its fate remained unknown, except for a potentially significant but unverified clue. In 1861, a bottle with a message washed ashore on the Hebrides Islands. Its authenticity is uncertain, but the message hinted at a possible cause of the Pacific's demise. It read, On board the Pacific, ship going down, great confusion on board, icebergs all around us on every side. I know I cannot escape. I write this because of our loss that friends may not live in suspense. The finder of this will please get it published. Number 7. Batavia, 1629. In June 1629, the Dutch East India Company ship Batavia met disaster, striking a reef near Beacon Island about 50 miles west of Western Australia. Although shipwrecks were common in that era, the Batavia's aftermath was notably horrific. Out of 322 people, 40 drowned, while the survivors reached a barren island lacking fresh water and food except for birds. The captain and senior officers left for Batvia, now Jakarta, in a long boat to get help, leaving Geronimus Cornelis, a company merchant, in charge. Cornelis proved to be a disastrous leader. He sent 20 soldiers to another island under the guise of searching for food, then abandoned them. He seized all weapons and food, initiated a brutal two-month tyranny, and forced sexual slavery on women, 
and started a ruthless killing spree, resulting in the deaths of about 110 people. However, the abandoned soldiers survived, establishing a fort and shelter on their island. Cornelius declared war against them, leading to a violent conflict. During this turmoil, the ship's captain returned with a rescue vessel, arrested the mutineers, and extracted confessions through torture. Cornelius and his cohorts were executed, ending the nightmare for the remaining 122 survivors. Number 6, SS La Begonia, 1898. In the early hours of July 4th, 1898, amidst a fog southeast of Halifax, Nova Scotia, a tragic maritime accident occurred. The French ocean liner SS La Bogone, en route from La Havre to New York, collided with the iron hulled sailing ship from Martyrshire. The impact struck La Bogone's starboard side, trapping or quickly flooding the cabin of passengers on that side. The collision rendered the starboard lifeboats unusable. And as the ship began to tilt dangerously, launching lifeboats from the port side became increasingly difficult. Chaos ensued among passengers and crews struggling for space in the few functional lifeboats. Within half an hour, La Pagone sank stern first. The severity of the disaster became apparent only when daylight broke and the fog cleared, revealing the Crow Martyrshire still afloat and the La Pagone completely submerged. Rescue efforts began, but it was tragically late for most on board. Out of 726 people on the La Bogone, a mere 173 survived, predominantly male crew members. The tragedy was marked by the loss of nearly all of the 300 women and every child on board, with only one woman among the survivors. Number 5, the SS Arctic. A Collins Line passenger steamship on September 27, 1854, starkly contrasts with the women and children first principle famously associated with the Titanic disaster. While traversing a foggy region off Newfoundland, the Arctic collided with the French fishing ship, Vesta. Efforts to seal the breach in the hull were futile, and over four hours the ship was progressively inundated, especially disabling the boilers and pumps. The Arctic had 250 passengers and 150 crew members, but only six lifeboats capable of carrying about 180 people. Initially, the evacuation proceeded orderly, prioritizing women and children. However, as pain set in among the crew, chaos erupted. The crew members overwhelmed their lifeboats, and in the mayhem, one capsized, drowning most of its occupants, mainly women. The captain's attempt to launch another boat was also thwarted, as it too was commandeered by male crew members. The last two lifeboats, and a raft constructed by some officers, were certainly seized by the crew. Notably, the engineers, armed and claiming they needed a boat to repair the ship, swiftly abandoned the scene, leaving many behind. Out of 400 people on the Arctic, only 85 survived, including 61 crew members and 24 male passengers. Tragically, all the women and children perished in the disaster. Number four, Sultana, 1865. The Civil War has finally ended after four long years. After enduring the harrowing conditions of Andersonville, which was a notorious Confederate prison, infamous for its high mortality rate of 29%, 1,953 Union prisoners were freed. These prisoners were packed onto the Sultana, a Mississippi River steamboat designed for just 376 passengers. Along with 177 more passengers and crew, the overloaded Sultana embarked on its journey, navigating a Mississippi River swollen by a severe flood. The disaster struck at 2 a.m. on April 27, 1865. The Sultana's defective boilers catastrophically exploded causing a massive blast that obliterated the boat's center, including pilot house, and toppled the smokestacks. The explosion trapped many in the flaming wreckage, leading to deaths from scalding or burning. Hundreds of frail ex-prisoners who leaped overboard drowned, unable to withstand the river's currents. By 7 a.m., as the Sultana sank near the Arkansas shore, approximately 1,169 men had perished, marking it as the deadliest maritime disaster in U.S. history. Number three. SS Atlantic, 1873. Before the infamous sinking of the Titanic in 1912, the White Star Line had faced another profound maritime tragedy when the SS Atlantic met its doom on an April night years prior. The ship was traveling from Liverpool to New York with 952 souls on board and made a detour to Halifax, Nova Scotia for additional coal. Believing they were entering the harbor and missed a fierce storm, the vessel was tragically off by 12 miles heading directly towards submerged rocks. Misjudging their position due to the absence of a recognized lighthouse signal, and despite the helmsman's apprehensions, the orders were to maintain their path. 
This decision led to a catastrophic collision with the rocks, tearing open the ship's hull. Passengers desperately clung to the tilting ship as they witnessed the futile launching of lightboats, which were either smashed against the ship's side or claimed by the violent sea. In a desperate act of bravery, crew member John Speakman swam to the rocks with a rope, establishing a makeshift escape route for those strong enough to navigate the perilous waters to safety. Thanks to this lifeline, approximately 429 individuals managed to survive and could only watch as the rest, some 535 passengers, perished in the waves. This number included all 156 women and all but one of the 189 children. Number two, SS Central America, 1857. On the 9th of September in 1857, the steamship SS Central America, laden with 477 passengers, 101 crew members, and over nine tons of gold from the California Gold Rush, encountered a devastating hurricane off the Carolina coastline. For 48 hours, the ship battled the ferocious storm, her steam-driven paddles striving to maintain her position against the hurricane's 100-mile-per-hour winds. However, by the 11th of September, her situation had grown dire. The boilers began to give out, the sails were shredded, and leaks sprung, threatening to overpower the ship's pumping capabilities. As the boilers ceased to function, the engines and pumps grew silent, leaving the vessel to drift helplessly on the tumultuous seas. Exhausted passengers spent a desperate night shuttling buckets of water through the pitch-black interior in a valiant but ultimately futile effort to stave off the rising waters. A brief respite came as the eye of the hurricane passed over, offering a haunting pause for those aboard to face the grim reality of their plight. But as the storm raged on, the ship began its final descent stern first into the depths. Dawn broke with a glimmer of hope as another vessel appeared on the horizon. Prioritizing the women and children, they were buried into lifeboats and braved the treacherous waters. This act of urgency and desperation resulted in the rescue of approximately 153 individuals. Yet, when the SS Central America succumbed to the sea after its three-day ordeal, it claimed the lives of around 425 people. Number one, SS Princess Alice, 1878. Imagine a serene twilight journey on a paddle steamer along the Thames, as was the case for around 700 Londoners on the evening of September 3rd, 1878. Their peaceful trip came to a tragic end when the SS Princess Alice was bisected by the coal ship SS Bywell Castle near Galleon's Reach, just east of the capital. Those inside the vessel at the collision's moment stood no chance, with the vessel succumbing to the river's depths within four minutes. Efforts to rescue the passengers using boats from the Bywell Castle and from those nearby on the shore proved difficult. Many were hindered by the heavy Victorian attire of the era, and the strong river currents swept them away. What compounded the tragedy into something even more horrific was the fact that London's sewage system expelled its contents directly into the Thames at the very location where the Princess Alice went down. Just an hour before the vessel's demise, a staggering 90 million gallons of untreated sewage had been released into the river which was already contaminated by affluents from gas and chemical plants. A report in the Times quoted a local scientist describing the sewage as two relentless streams of decomposing effluent fizzling with lethal gases so dark they stained the river for miles and emitted a ghastly mortuary stench. This noxious mire was lethal not only to those who succumbed to its toxicity, but also to those who through initially surviving the sinking, later perished from the effects of the foul water they had ingested. Out of the 130 unfortunate souls who initially survived the catastrophe, about 16 later lost their lives due to the polluted waters they had consumed.